All right, so hi guys, welcome to another off the record concert. Um, like Isha said, it's hosted by the Stanford Daily. I'm Ellie, I use she, her pronouns, and today I have the pleasure of introducing Isha. So Isha, do you wanna just say a little bit about yourself first? Yeah, hi, I'm Isha, I use she, her pronouns. I am in class of 2024, English major. I'm super excited to be part of this. Awesome, uh, where are you from? I'm from Princeton, New Jersey. Awesome. Cool. So we'll also have an unrecorded Q&A session at the very end. So stick around for that. Um, but first, we're going to kick things off with dying is a beautiful thing to do. And this is from Isha's EP, Fact of the Fiction. And it's been in my April Spotify playlist since the moment I heard it. So I am very excited. It was the summer. So on Genius, I saw there was an annotation that said the song was inspired by the comment, like, you're the kind of girl people write songs about. So could you talk like a little bit more about that comment and how it got turned into the song? Oh, yeah. Um, I don't know if anyone's on TikTok here, but um, I started TikTok like in November and just some of the comments, it'll be really stupid, but some of the comments I'll be like, oh my gosh, like these people are really <laughs> poetic in the way that they say things. So I think it was Angie Fisk. She had a comment on one of her videos being like, you're the type of girl people write songs about. And she did a response. So I was like, oh my gosh, let me write a song for like this comment and like stitch it. And so I did that and it came up with the chorus. So um, I don't know, people really liked it. And especially on Instagram, I think people that's where most people saw it. 
but I finished the song because it was inspired by, I was reading Call Me By Your Name at the time. So it was partly inspired by that. Like the chorus was inspired by the comment and I'm a huge like Lana Del Rey stan. <laughs> so there's like some, some references in there, but yeah, it's weird. It like started from that one comment just became this whole thing. That's so cool that it was inspired by Call Me By Your Name. I feel like that book had like really beautiful like prose or just the style of writing. And then, I don't know, I was also, Crystal and I were both thinking like, your songs have like really, really stunning lyrics. So we were just wondering like, how does your songwriting process look and how long does it normally take? Oh, thank you. I love lyrics. I'm like a fanatic when it comes to just, well, I'm an English major, so it's like my thing. And the process is pretty different every time, but it usually starts with, I'll have like a concept or a line, like you're the type of girl people write songs about. And then it's like fleshing it out, but it's also like the idea is trying to catch up to me a lot of times. So it's mostly 90% just playing around and sitting and waiting. And then 10% the lyrics actually coming to you. And obviously I take inspiration from books I'm reading or lines I hear. So yeah, sometimes it takes a really long time. And then sometimes it just comes really naturally. This was kind of a combination of both. That, yeah, like Crystal said, English major power duo. But yes, very exciting to also hear that you're an English major. Cool. So we can go on to the next song, which is your new single, Far Away. I wanna go to the ocean where I'm free. The forest for the color changing leaves. Maybe a mountain city or country. Living So I feel like this song is like super fun, super carefree. And when I listen to it, I can just imagine like spontaneous adventures with my friends. And I thought it seemed like really different from your EP, which had that whole love story arc. So I was wondering like if you were in a different headspace when you were writing this song versus your first ones. 
Oh, yeah. Thank you. I mean, that's the goal is like the whole spontaneous adventures with your friend. And I was definitely in a different headspace because back to the fiction that Holy P was based on, you know, books I was reading and um, just, yeah, the romance. And this one I wrote immediately after high school graduation when I was like, get me out of here. I hate New Jersey. Like, what is this? And I don't know, because they give you this whole expectation that it's going to be like, oh my gosh, I met my friends, like I miss, you know, like home and all that stuff. And it was not like that. I was really excited to leave. And then the pandemic hit <laughs> and I was like <laughs> right back at home. And the thing was that I was so in this mindset of my life is going to start after high school, like fuck my like fuck everyone else like I'm gonna cut everyone off like it's done and then I come back home and there's like I've cut everyone off and I was like oh shoot like I probably shouldn't have done that but obviously this whole restlessness and teenage angst of living in the suburbs and wanting to leave and have more adventures I feel like was very relevant especially in the pandemic and when I'm writing songs I definitely have the production in mind so that whole acoustic EP felt natural to that. And then this one was more fun. So it felt like it needed more pizzazz. Yeah, that totally makes sense. That actually like leads really well because I was wondering like what what's it's been like experimenting with just like producing this one more? Cause like, like you said, your first one was really acoustic. It was just like you and your guitar. So then like working with producers and like changing your songs that way, like what's that been like for you? Well, I listen to a lot of different types of music. So I usually have a lot of reference tracks and I'll give it to them and be like, I like this sound at 0.42, like let's add this. And thankfully I work with people that are really flexible and listen to what I have to say. So it's been a fun process. I feel like if it's not fun, then you're doing it wrong or you're <laughs> just with the wrong person. Yeah. I think that's a really good mindset for <laughs> most things um I think it's also like when you do something you love for a living like I think one of my English teachers was like you have to be really careful because the English major can make you hate reading and that's the reason you became an English major in the first place mm -hmm. so wait so you mentioned that like after summer you were like really excited to get away from New Jersey and all that did you manage to go anywhere before the pandemic hit yeah I actually took a gap year in Nashville oh. and that was probably the best time of my life in terms of independence and living on my own and actually making new friends. So thankfully I did get to experience a little bit of that, but obviously it was cut short <laughs> and I'm back here and just very, I think I was just really bored. So then I wrote the song and I was like, there has to be other people out there that need some like need to go far away need something else happening in their life mm -hmm. do you know where you would want to travel first like as soon as the pandemic is over or I guess everyone's vaccinated mm, I really want to go to Thailand I love Thai food and that whole culture that sounds very exciting I hope you get to go there <laughs> like oh. this summer or soon mm -hmm. all right Cool. Our next song is Manic Pixie Dream Girl. Um, I love that title, by the way. Ah, thank you. <laughs>
So I was wondering, like, with the name of that title, and just like, what would an image of a Manic Pixie Dream Girl look like to you, like in your head? Oh my gosh, in my head? Well, the only ones that I ever see, it's a film trope, if um, you didn't know just about this girl who basically exists to create this fun life for the guy and really quirky, really zany, always fun loving. And I always imagine her with like color hair, like colored hair, sometimes spiky maybe. And just maybe like leggings with, oh, the only thing I can think about are like those girls that roar at you in elementary school, but just imagine them grown up and hot. Like that's kind of the vibe that they always give off. Um, and it's fine because they're hot. So it's like, they're not weird, they're quirky. So yeah. Yeah, I can totally see that with the whole like. Oh, so much, Kelly said Ramona Flowers, exactly. <laughs> like the Scott Pilgrim movie. Yeah. Yeah, I was just thinking like that idea of like colored hair. For me, it's like really brightly colored hair that I have in my mind of it. Mm -hmm. Um, do you have a favorite artist right now or any songs that you're listening to on repeat right now? Ooh, well, my all-time favorite artist is John Mayer. I'm a huge stan of his. I love Casey Musgraves, Lana Del Rey. And what am I listening to now? I, there's this one song by The Valley that's called like 1999, I think. For some reason, I'm really into songs nowadays that have 90s references or like, oh, let's go back to 90s. I wasn't even born then, but I'm like, yeah, let's go back. It was the good, the, the good days. Um, but yeah. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Do you have a regular routine for songwriting? Like, do you write every day? Are you like disciplined about it? Yeah, it's daily torture because <laughs> <laughs> I used to do it for like, when I was inspired, I would, you know, write, but then you say I'm a songwriter and then you have to have some discipline behind it and do it every day. So I try to spend at least an hour every day. Um, if not writing a whole song, coming up with at least a verse or a line and um, co-writing with other people helps a lot because you can schedule it and you can't back out of that because someone else is holding you accountable. Mm -hmm. then what do you do or like where do you go if there are days where I think obviously like there are blocks like with anything like where do you go to try to like get inspiration or try to get like words flowing again I go on so many walks I think maybe half my day is walking and um I'll go on walks I'll listen to music I will like read books you know just try and <laughs> life a little bit so that it's not just in my head for like this one song and this one idea, just like, you know, sometimes ideas come to you when you least expect it. So you have to get out of the house. Yeah. Do you find that there's like a theme like you come back to often or like a favorite topic that you write about? I write so much about love. It's ironic because <laughs> my love life is like dead. So um, it's just fun to write about. And I write about that. I write like a lot about angsty topics that will not see the light of day because it's just me complaining in song form <laughs> because it's just you know a form of self-expression but I try to write about different things because I think it's more fun and challenging that way yeah that totally makes sense like drawing on things that aren't just life experience um yeah and you had mentioned like you took a gap year in Nashville and I'm sure like you have a ton of awesome memories but are there any things you stand out or like things you particularly loved about the city yeah my parents are watching this I can't say certain <laughs> no, I'm kidding um I really love live music I miss it a lot this is my first kind of live concert type thing since the pandemic started but I would go out and perform every night and got to see friends perform. So that was really different and exciting. Wow, performing every night sounds so cool. Did your voice like get hoarse? <laughs> or like... Yeah, but I sometimes like it when it gets a little raspy. <laughs> mm -hmm. Variety. Mm -hmm. Cool. 
And so besides for like blowing up on social media and getting like 170,000 streams or whatever on Spotify, you also placed 11th in the world at a triathlon in Switzerland. Oh, which, like, yeah. I was blown away to learn that. But like, yeah, did you talk about that or what that was like? Yeah, that's like my two truths and a lie go to fact. She an athlete. Yeah, I try. Um, I've been doing triathlon since I was like 12 and I would just do them a lot. And I qualified for the national championship. So then I went to that in Cleveland and I placed for like world championships. And then I went to Switzerland <laughs> and, you know, <laughs> the funny thing is that the reason I did triathlon was I was like, I need to do something besides music. Like I can't just be the music person. So I started doing that, but then I just got really invested in it. So I still train now at home. It's just events aren't happening. So I'm excited for them to happen again. Well, welcome to your typical Stanford student. <laughs> the most in everything. <laughs> All right. So we have one last song today and it's called Should Have Just Slept. song is one of my personal favorites um I really? love it yeah thank you um, 
I wish we were up on Spotify so I could listen to it. <laughs> yeah, I, know. I have to get I have to get more on there. Um, <laughs> yeah, so last question for me. Um, wrapping up, do you have any exciting projects coming up that you can share? Um, collaborations, albums, triathlons, I don't know, anything coming up. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I have certain songs that I want to release that um, I know people have been asking for. So I'm excited to share it with them. And uh, I'm writing a song with Lizzie McAlpine and Ella McJane, who are two people, or just Ella Jane, <laughs> um, not Ella McJane, but they're two people that I've been listening to on Spotify. So that was unexpected, but you know, <laughs> we're doing it. And yeah, honestly, just like a lot more releasing music, which I've just started to do more steadily. So yeah, there's so many songs, guys, so many songs. I like, you know, I just have to get them done, but they're there. 